Hello and welcome to the channel, I'm Krakenfall, and today we are doing another Let's Game It Out reaction. I'm pretty excited for this one because I had been waiting to do this until I got nuclear set up in my Satisfactory game for the first time. We are going to be reacting to, I produced so much nuclear waste, the world is ruined forever. And it is going to be crazy. I, I did, in my game, get to set up nuclear. Hey, Hobbs. <laughs> When I scratch Hobbs and he likes it, he just like looks up at me and closes his eyes. It's the cutest thing. <laughs> I did get nuclear set up and I, I went for, I shot for the sky because I wanted to get nuclear fully set up, fully sustainable. So I didn't want to have any nuclear waste build up. I set up the plutonium processing, which I know in this, this point in the game, plutonium probably wasn't a thing, but that's okay. I wanted to get my world set up so that no nuclear waste builds up. I wanted nuclear waste to be to be processed as soon as it was created and that no doggos would ever have to be employed to do waste disposal. <laughs> so I was able to succeed in doing that and it was great. And everything is working fine. There's no stoppages. I, I did have it stop a couple times, but I just had to tweak a few things, do a little extra math because <laughs> I do math on demand, not, uh, not preemptively. But uh, yeah, so this, I, I was waiting to watch the satisfactory nuclear videos because I wanted to get some experience with nuclear so I fully understood what's happening and what Josh is doing to his world. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm super distracted by Hobbs right now. I was trying to think of something else to say before we start the video but Hobbs, you can't, you can't really tell but he's uh, super, super chilling right now. He is the chill master. I think we'll just leave it like this. So sorry if you can't focus on the video uh, and the reaction, but uh, you know, I like, I like providing something, a little something for everyone. As Frankie did say in chat, uh, it is holidays here. So if you are watching this during the holidays, happy holidays, happy new year. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas and uh, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. Um, if you're not watching this during the holidays, then uh, welcome. That's okay. I hope you have a good day. This is the last stream of the year uh, and uh, we've had a good year. So I'm, I'm happy to be sending it off with LGIO in nuclear fashion. All right, let's get started. <laughs> oh, and uh, if you haven't watched this video, please head over to Let's Game It Out's channel right here. I'm gonna put that link. You can also look in the description. Please watch this video over there first. It is kind of an old video, but if you haven't seen it, please watch it on Let's Game It Out's channel first. That's where it deserves to be to be watched first, and uh, Let's Game It Out deserves those views. This is for, for you to watch me experience it for the first time. With that said, thank you for doing that, and uh, let's go. Hey there, it's Josh. Welcome back to Let's Game It Out. Oh my god, it's time for more Satisfactory. Oh, how I Yay. missed you, Factory, with no rules, limits, or logic. Satisfactory is a game about making efficient machines. Or in my case, just find new and inventive ways to torture the game. First, we built a factory that was actually kind of normal. Until I realized you could make it look like this. And then I made it look like this. And I realized the frame rate gets worse, which excites me. And then we <laughs> tested those limits by building a tornado out of conveyor belts. And it's actually kind of pretty. Just don't look directly at it, unless you like slideshows. Then then I saw this empty valley and I thought, you know what this could use? A conveyor belt weave. Not to be outbeaten, we went back over to Belt NATO here and turned it into a full fledged cocoon. By who? After that, we <laughs> moved on to other interests, like messing with these trucks here, only to realize that if you throw them all in a pit like this, they become sentient and try to escape. And I thought <laughs> we might be done. And then those crazy developers just kept updating the game, so I kept trying out their new stuff, like this beautiful train station that you can even custom name. And boy, did I custom name it. That's when I realized we could send the through the earth and straight to hell. And then at the tail end of the last episode, we realized one last thing left to do, nuclear power. Oh, and also, today's video is sponsored by NordVPN, but I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. Oh, and before we head to our first destination, check this out. The game actually runs better now, and this blows my mind. Oh my god, the performance <laughs> okay, increase so they did is update amazing. It by this, point. this thing doesn't destroy my computer anymore. Like, I can run up to it, I can bask in its majesty. It is a brave new world. So what are we gonna do today? Wow, that's Play a huge performance update. Power, of course. 
course. We built this guy at the end of last episode, and our first step to nuclear victory is we need to go mine some uranium and shove it into this thing. Now we're ready to go face the elements. You know what? Let's do it with style in our beautiful, sexy car. Now, I feel like I took a wrong turn somewhere, but I'm gonna have faith that this is the right way. Well, everything's green. I feel like that's sort of a good sign. I think we're going to the right place. Yep, we definitely are. I see little bits of ore here. Oh, hello, cat friends. These are supposed to be spiders in the game, but for everybody's benefit, I turned on the arachnophobia mode, which turns them into these creepy cat heads, which I think we can all agree is a little worse than just spiders. Anyway, know, right? we'll just take care of them in short order. No big deal. Oh, you want some too, do you? Let's get this nightmare over with. Okay, where was I? Putting down I feel our like beautiful the cat mining sounds drill, that's even what. Scarier. Never has anything in a cave looked so majestic. So right now, this thing doesn't have any power, which honestly is for the better, because if this thing is pulling out uranium while we have it set up, we're just going to be taking on lots of radiation. Oh, did I mention to find Wait, this like, wall this thing nuclear well, power drill, plant? That's no, okay, what. you Never built the miner. Okay, better. sorry. Oh, did I mention to find this? I had to go through a waterfall. It's true. I wandered around for like an hour before I figured out it's back here. Okay, finally ran the conveyor belt all the way home. We're gonna stage our uranium over here. You may recognize this little place over here. In a previous video, this is where I had all of my trucks. You know, the ones that turned into a sentient species. And then I had to put them down, otherwise the game would never run again. <laughs> so we're gonna stage everything here because we can't just send the uranium over stop the game now. We gotta make two things first. Uranium cells and electromagnetic control rods. Uranium cells are the uranium itself as well as concrete and the electromagnetic rods are stators and AI limiters. Easy enough, let's make a couple assemblers. We'll just place one here and also just kind of over there. We're also going to send our uranium into this guy over here, which by the way, we haven't connected the power to that thing yet, so let's do that now. Okay, here we go. So now that we've connected the power, all we have to do is wait for the drill to do its thing and bring the uranium to us. While we wait, let me tell you about the sponsor for this video, and that would be NordVPN. I don't get a chance to talk about this very much in my videos, but I actually take online privacy extremely seriously. And as part of my arsenal of things I do to stay safe online, I've always used a VPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private to. Network. Think of it as like for a, a long hazmat time. suit for your data. So again, that's nordvpn.com slash game it out. And don't forget to use game it out at checkout to get that extra free month. NordVPN, thanks again for sponsoring me. Thank and you for is. sponsoring so LJO NordVPN and, and also... It still hurts to get in your right. I... Oh boy, does it ever. Oh, yeah. It's kind of a shame. It's so pretty to look at. It's like a <laughs> it's bunch of weird. slimers. Just watching on a other people's belt. So this guy over here is going to be for our uranium cells. The uranium we obviously have. And right in front of us at the center of our base is some concrete. Okay, and there's the concrete. As I slowly die to radiation poisoning. Now this thing's doing the magic of making uranium cells. And for our control rods, gotta grab them stators and AI limiters. Alright, AI limiters for days. And these are the stators. Thankfully, I have pretty much all of these materials being built somewhere in my base. And I just need to find them and route them over here. Now that those two things are underway, we have wow, to that was going our in old fast. friend the manufacturer, which we're gonna build down here for kinda no reason. And in this thing, we're gonna build nuclear fuel rods, which is what can finally go inside the nuclear reactors. My favorite part about this? Very radioactive. That's what I like to hear. See, if we can't work quickly here, I seem to be taking on a not insignificant amount of radiation poisoning. And there we go. And we'll just sorry, send sorry, these sorry. beauties right over there. And since I've already got my medical inhaler out, this calls for a celebration puff. <laughs> uh, now that I've taken on 10 generations worth do that of after radiation workouts. sickness, I'm just gonna stare off into space for a bit and let my empire just grow. Okay, I think we're in pretty good shape now. So many beautiful <laughs> fuel rods. Now comes the fun part, where I route fuel rods all over the map and wonder if I'm gonna melt my face off. Almost there. Ah, finally, after all that, the fuel rods are in the thingamajig. The machine looks to be working, and boy is it a thing of beauty. Now the only thing left to do is hook it up to power. I thought that'd be more exciting. Ooh, but that smoke is. My god, look at that jump. Our capacity for power was nice. 4,400, and then we brought the power plant online, and now it's 6,900. That is quite nice. the leap. So here's the <laughs> other thing that happens with nuclear power. We get delicious, beautiful waste. Extremely radioactive. And what are we gonna do with that nuclear waste? Well, build a bunch of conveyor belts that zigzags it through this waterfall, of course. And I'm using the slow conveyor belts, because I want all that radiation goodness to get all in the water supply. And then once it slow journey is complete. <laughs> All that tasty waste goes into this bin for future generations to worry about. Okay, first nuclear power plant done. And while I'm satisfied, we could Wait, get that first does, one off the ground. Does... I'm forgetting how nuclear in real life works. Doesn't water not hold on to nuclear radiation for very long? 
I thought it needs to be absorbed by other particles because they, they use they use water to cool nuclear reactors so that we can heat up the water to spin hydro turbines to actually generate the power from nuclear facilities. But where does the where does the water go? Is it become does it become radioactive for a long period of time? Water doesn't put the minerals and other such things in it do. Oh, sure. OK, so impurities in water make sense. Okay, so let's game it out is successfully poisoning the water supply because there's tons of minerals and natural water springs. Oops. Do you really think one of us is a nuclear engineer? No, but, you know, learning about nuclear mechanics is interesting and good for people to know, especially since nuclear is probably going to help us get to uh, net zero carbon emissions. No, Hobbs, no. We're on a standoff. I'm holding him and he's he's respecting me, but he wants to leave. What if I bribed you with scratches? Would you want to stay if I give you scratches? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's just kind of shift you into place. Okay, I've got a, I got a scratch Hobbs to keep him here. Let's do this. I feel like there's so much more we could be doing. Huh, this gives me an idea. I can't help but think being able to look at the cocoon again is a blessing in disguise. So for the first time in a long time, we're going back in. It's been so long since I was able to climb in this thing. Here we are in the belly of the beast. Wow. These, of course, being our three oil no! refineries. I'm tempted to go back and change all of these Mark 1 conveyor belts to Mark 5, but even I hurt imagining how long that would take. We're now here at the halfway point. You can tell because the iron rods stop and the oil begins. So I don't actually think there's an open. Opening. I think I have to make one to get out. Nope, wait, found my opening. I'll just fly my way up there. Hopefully I don't uh, run out of fuel for my jetpack. It's a long way down. Ah, and here we are at the very top. Okay. I know I've said it a couple I was like, of how times, is he gonna but do I that? cannot stress how bizarre it is to be able to look at this thing and the frame rate maintains. Look at the dumpster that is my factory setup. God. Like at this point, even I can't tell what goes where. So I keep forgetting that there's... That looks entirely too much like Tentacle Town like stairs and walkways and it would be really useful because we do need to find a way to get up there fast but no one likes taking stairs so i found a better way to get up there it's called a bunch of bounce pads all over the place here let me show you what i mean <laughs> i have not used bounce, bounce pads pad right enough. over here so we just jump on it's this probably the uh, belt, trauma which will launch us in at the right angle uh, it'll take us over to this bad boy, video. and it'll just start bouncing us all the way up to the top and the nice thing is it's all set up so i don't have to do anything and nice I can just bask and look at our factories this is like, uh, and really just enjoy the ride oh shit. Donkey Kong Country anything. with the barrels. It's just bouncing me for me. So I can just look around at the nice surroundings, really take in all the beautiful scenery. Are you f***ing serious? Or I can just hold on for dear life and hope the whole thing works. Honestly, it works about 10% of the time. It's the best. But it yeah. gets you close to the Physics top of the Physics are somewhat determined so by frame rate. I found that out so the hard way. Here we are coming in for a landing. Bounce off this backboard. Here comes the final bounce. I can't think of a better Boing. way to get to the top of this spiral. I okay, like so it. you might be asking yourself, what's That's the fun. plan? I mean, if Probably you look out there, though. you can already see our nuclear power plant dumping nuclear waste down below. So here's what we're going to do. I know this seems like sacrilege, but we're going to cut the head off of the beast. And I know it seems scary but i promise you there's a reason for everything remember how the top of this thing because of the red tint looked kind of like a warhead well now we're really putting that nuclear touch on the top of it yeah okay that's looking better <laughs> got that kind of gaudy vegas quality to it so why is my <laughs> nuclear reactor already showing signs of wear and tear i haven't even hooked it up yet and of course he, we a gaudy vegas so <laughs> i think he He's talking about the Pyramid Hotel, the Luxor Hotel. Yeah, it's like all very geometrically shaped. And uh, the way the slope of the pyramid rolls into the nuclear shape, it, nuclear power generator shape. That makes sense. We want it to look classy, right? Like, look at all the crap already floating around this thing. That majestic crown up there deserves the finest curb appeal. So first, let's make sure to loop this stuff through everything curb appeal? so that everything is nicely irradiated. Okay, yeah, this will do. B plus at best. <laughs> so we're going to take these fuel rods and we're going to feed them in through the bottom of the cocoon. That way, the entire thing can maintain its visual splendor. Okay. Okay, there we go. Everything is properly irradiated. Now all we need to do is Did he slow that footage down or is the frame rate suffering because of the again? bounce pads floating in the air over here. There's already a bunch of power lines just ready for me to connect to. God, look at that burst in power right there. Now we got to deal with my favorite thing, nuclear waste. The waste is all going to come out of right here. And as is my custom, we're only going to use the finest, slowest belts we can. Now all we need to do is just run this belt full of byproduct goodness all the way down to the edge of these barrels. And just to make it a tad more convenient, 
convenient. I'm gonna send the nuclear waste down in one of these splitters using the power of conveyor lift technology. <laughs> Thank God these things can I love just keep lifts. going lower and lower and lower. Look at that, you can just have it hand delivered right to the ground. You know what I think I'm gonna do with all this nuclear stuff? I'm just gonna add a merger to where these iron rods are coming out. And I'm just gonna mix these in with the iron rods. Why oh, yeah, though? I'm sure this won't be a problem at all. <laughs> well, there it goes. Join your friends. Okay, you know, so he's gonna mix plants, it into the I still the, feel like we're not producing enough cone. nuclear waste. Ah, much better. There's like 50 power plants back there. But this actually poses a new problem. While our power capacity is amazing, our consumption is, uh, conservative at best. And in order for these things to start chewing through those fuel rods, we actually have to get our power consumption up. Otherwise, they're just gonna <laughs> sit here idly. Which is great if you're trying to build an efficient factory. It's not so great if you want your main export to be nuclear waste. And God, do we want more of these barrels. And to do that, we're gonna turn to our old One friend, train technology. And the reason for that is because trains generally generate electricity, and I can set them to go forever. So test one. One station here, and another station here. Let's put a train down and do a quick test. As you can see, firing this thing up, it goes around put a and bunch around of trains and around. Generating train. not nearly as much as I would like, but hey, it's generating something. Something else interesting we can do is we can connect trains together, and while each train in and of itself doesn't take up more power to function like this, they all have to fire up their engines to move. That's a nice little power push for not doing a whole lot, and I'll know this power output matters. If I see barrels piling up here, I know it's working. Now I'm interested to oh, see if we can generate. Oh, okay. So back then, back then it only produces waste if if it's using power. That doesn't make sense. Which probably, I mean, it's not like that now, is it? Because I'm pretty sure the fuel rods burn now, whether or not you're using the electricity. Yeah, I don't know some power faster. Test number two, in which case we see if adding some rails that go up increases how much power it takes. And then also I gave it a little more distance, mostly because I don't know how to use train tracks very well. Let's play conductor and see how it goes. So as always, when you first start it out, it does take a lot of power. Downhill does a little bit less for the power. Once the train gets moving, it takes up less because it's already got that speed going. Oh, so here's my current no running train theory. Collision maximum at this point trains I combined with maximum <laughs> train. I have to, I have to show you guys what happened. I haven't released the episode, the episode of my let's play for satisfactory yet about trains it's coming next but i uh <laughs> i found out that the trains have collision the hard way thank you blue smoke and also happy for sim chat thank you <laughs> oh no that went about, about as bad as it could get <laughs> but yeah they, they must have added train collision uh it, <laughs> a few updates later stations means tons of stopping and starting, meaning tons of power generated. You know, I have an idea how we can test this, but I got to build something real fast. So hang on, it'll just take a second. Okay, here's test number whatever this is. I sure hope it goes okay. It's essentially one gigantic loop that goes through all of these tracks. It's not particularly pretty. Josh going to use 120,000 megawatts per hour by starting up a bunch of trains all at once. That would be pretty crazy. Now, nowadays, you can just use hyper tubes and lights and all kinds of things to use power really quick. Yeah, we'll have to see. Pretty or elegant. Hey, the whole point is just to generate electricity. Okay, now we've added the trains. In case you're curious, this is 188 trains all connected together, taking up the entire track start to finish. <laughs> you know what pains me most about this? It's not that it's actually semi orderly, although that also pains me. It's how freaking slow everything's going. I didn't realize that would be the thing that drives me nuts. But enough talk. How's it doing for our power? At an idle state, about 6,000. Not too bad. When the trains start up again, it hits a nice healthy 12,000. That's still a far cry from maxing out our potential with 100,000. But before I go nuts and start laying out more track, let's at least see if we're exporting any of the good stuff now. And by that, of course, I mean nuclear waste. Yeah, yeah, this'll do. This'll do nicely. That's a lot of barrels. I think this is working out quite well. So normally <laughs> Normally the goal would be to try to figure out where to put this stuff so it doesn't do any harm. But why would you want to hide something so majestic? Now me, I look at my base and I see something that's missing. And I think this has a chance to be a real showpiece. Once again, I'll be back in a hot minute. Well, that's looking just swell. Oh, oh my yeah, gosh. Feels good. This is looking great. So one might look at this and get the impression <laughs> this is the that exact I covered opposite the entirety of, what I of my base in nuclear waste. And you'd be right. Up to and definitely including the weave. Which if I do say so myself has never looked better. It's kind of like this is a waste disposal site. Except above ground and advertising oh, we put it in the presence. Weave. Oh my, oh my god, gosh, I forgot.
rod. The so iron bad. rods were if the weave. If I die and I have to respawn in, I just die instantly. I've made the base so hostile Ugh. I can't even be here anymore. And also, the spaghetti of my base is just completely out of control now. But damn, that nuclear waste looks so vibrant in the moonlight. So I feel like this is how this base was gonna end up. Nuclear waste everywhere. Power plants, as far as the eyes can see. Our conveyor NATO that turned into a conveyor cocoon now has a warhead aiming up to the heavens. And thank God I can use these bounce pads to just bask in it all while I fly off. Oh, and thank my lucky stars, the frame rate's gotten kind of bad again. I'd like to thank NordVPN again for sponsoring <laughs> this video. So I think that's gonna do it for this episode. Hope you had fun, I know I did. I'm gonna go check and see if I'm growing a third arm from all this radiation, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> I don't think it works uh... like that. You gotta have a couple... Hey generations of children before you can grow the third arms. I guess it's possible because your your DNA gets altered. <laughs> that was awesome. That was the exact opposite of what I wanted my my world to look like. And it is. At the end, he was saying something about the warhead, about the nuclear facility being on the top of his hurricane cone thing being a warhead. It makes me wish that Satisfactory had pistons like in Minecraft so you could like push things up and kind of you know have a liftoff <laughs> and if you could like have them intertwining like in a zigzag and just keep pushing it up and up and up and up I don't know there's probably better ways to do that but there you could make a mod that would make machines unattached from the world so you could actually like make them like give them physics oh that would be a really deep mod though because machines probably don't have physics they probably just have a collision box and that's it anyway <laughs> I can see now why Josh needed a disposal method. I am so glad that now you can turn nuclear waste into plutonium fuel rods to actually put into the awesome sink and get rid of. I'm not exactly sure what I would do if that didn't exist. I'd probably make a facility in the sky and just send all of my nuclear waste up there and just not deal with it until the end of my game. Save. So, I don't know. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching. Please click like and subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. It helps the video get seen. It's been a really interesting year. I never actually thought I would get to this point in my channel. So if you are watching and you've watched some of my other videos, thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having fun with me. And I'm really looking forward to what I do this next year. I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of videos that I've been working on in the background. I'm trying to stop talking about them because I actually don't know when I'm gonna be able to release most of them. Lots of things coming this next year. I appreciate you hanging around to find out where we go. So thank you. I hope you have a wonderful New Year's and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.